on the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord gave thanks. And he took the bread and broke it. And he took the bread and he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he had taken the cup. And when he had supped, he said, This is the cup, the New Testament, in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he comes. Well, here's the thing about that. Every time we do that, that is the gospel preached. His death, burial, and resurrection. And as yeah. the sun is just coming up over the trees, let us take our bread together. And let us drink together. To God be the glory. I'm just going to set this down right here. First, giving honor to God, to the saints in Christ seated here before me, it is an honor and privilege to be here this morning to preach the word of God. I won't delay it much longer, but I want to first give thanks to everyone who set up the chairs, everyone who made breakfast, everyone who put a plug in a place. But first and foremost, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 If you would please rise to your feet. I have four short verses. I'm coming from the book of Acts. The second chapter, the 21st to the 24th verse. The 21st to the 24th verse. If you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads as follows. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. As ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined counsel and for knowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosened the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. You may be seated. Pray with me now. Father God, we just thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for the crisp day. We thank you for each and everything that you've done for us. We even thank you for my alarm to wake me up this morning to make sure that I'm on my way. Father God, it is your glory. It is to your glory this morning that we are here. It is to you to praise. It is for everything about you, Lord, that we have to give thanks for, that we have to praise for. Father God, I just thank you for my darling congregation. Allow them to hear you, Lord, and see you, Lord, not to see me, but to hear your word, Lord, to hold fast to it, to come to the faith, to strengthen their faith, to increase them in faith, to give them courage in days ahead. Father God, we just thank you now for these and all things. But most of all, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who rose on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to lift up verse 22, where it says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. I like to speak from the thought this morning. What signs do you need to believe in Jesus? What signs do you need to believe in Jesus? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, my neighbor. Oh, my neighbor. What sign are you waiting for? What sign are you waiting for? If you look to your right, you'll see the sun, the S-O-N. He's rising. That's the S-U-N, but the S-O-N has risen. Repeat after me. He is risen. He has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. We have just affirmed together that our Lord and Savior Jesus has risen from the grave to the glory of God. Amen. What a wonderful statement. Full of power, hope, and joy, and love. No longer are we hopeless people heading on a one-way trip to hell, but now we are elevated, elated, escalated, exalted, edified, and built up to the glory of God the Father. Church, we are people this morning celebrating and remembering an event that changed the world, changed your life, changed my life, changed the lives of millions of people around the world. It is my mission this morning first to preach to let the Holy Spirit reach the unsaved person with the message of the gospel. 
Second, to preach and remind those saved persons who are caught up in the things of this world and have forgotten who they belong to. You are a child of the one true king. Lastly, to preach, celebrate, and rejoice with my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, the risen king, our Lord, Jesus. Come and give God some glory right now. Give him a hand clap of praise. We see here in today's text, Peter, on the morning of Pentecost, preaching the gospel. He's letting everyone know who is visiting Jerusalem about the resurrection of Jesus. He's telling the Easter story. Look at the text, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is why I'd like to give you three for the Trinity to the glory of God. My first point, the sign you need to hear is call on the name of Jesus. The sign you need to hear is call on the name of Jesus for salvation from your sins. Let's dissect this text this morning. Salvation can only be found in one name, the name of Jesus. Acts 4.12 tells us, there is no other name by, under heaven by which men can be saved. Jesus. Say it, sweet name with me. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. You must call on the name of Jesus. His name alone is the only name by which we can be saved. But look at the text. It shall come to pass that whosoever, whosoever Minerva, whosoever Randy, whosoever Geraldine, whosoever Brandy, whosoever Lorraine, whosoever shall call on the name of Jesus, Miss Anel shall be saved. It is by the precious blood of our Savior Jesus, his sacrifice of the cross, he paid the cost to be the boss, to prevent us from being lost. Everything has a price. You heard of the saying, there is no such thing as a free lunch. There's nothing free. It costs money to prepare the items you're going to eat. Somebody had to pay for it. Somebody had to pay for that. It costs to be the boss. And Jesus paid it with his blood when he was nailed on the tree on Good Friday. Jesus, while we were still sinners, while we were still his enemy, too weak, unable to save ourselves, died on the cross for you and for me. Everything has a price. Jesus paid the price. He paid the ultimate price when we were lost in this world. Lost in drugs. Lost in booze. Lost in alcohol. Porn. Chasing after Mr. Right only to find Miss Wrong. Chasing after the dollar. After being lost in this world for the good shepherd laid down his life for you and me. Amen. Your salvation, my salvation, our salvation was not free. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of our sins. God allowed Jesus to be the substitute that would pay the price for our sins. For God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us, that we might, not ha might, we might have the righteousness of God in him. But if you don't believe me, Hebrews 9 and 22 explains in clear detail how God didn't spare his own son, but freely gave him up to be the sacrifice. That blood, our blood that needed to be saved, our lives, his, our, our lives, his blood bought our sinful souls and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Hebrews 9, 22 says, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. It was the blood of Jesus that set us free and paid the price for our salvation. But now, once and for all time, he has appeared at the end of the age to remove sin by his own death and sacrifice. So Christ was offered once for all at one time as a sacrifice to take away the sins for many people. Amen. Jesus will come again. I don't, I don't think y'all heard me. Jesus will come again. Not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly awaiting him. That's our salvation. But are you listening for the call? Look at the text again. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Marty, look at the text in verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these voice, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. We see my second point. Julie, people saw all the signs of Jesus, all the miracles and wonders. People saw all the signs of Jesus, the miracles and wonders. In verse 22, you see Peter in his speech. This is his Pentecost speech. This is after receiving the Holy Spirit. They went outside and started speaking in tongues, speaking to every, speaking in every language. But Peter in his speech 
began pleading with his audience saying, ye men of Israel, hear these words. He's stressing the importance of what Jesus has done and begs the crowd's attention. He tells them the truth that Jesus of Nazareth was approved by God, meaning he was sent from God and his purpose was to save you and me from our sins. But while Jesus was here on earth, the signs he performed, the miracles he performed, the wonders he performed, he did those things as evidence for everyone to see that he was sent by God for our salvation. Richard, don't miss this part of the text. Jesus did his miracles in plain view, right in front, all in the open and public eye for everyone to see. How do I know that? Look at the text, the last part of verse 22, where it says, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. You see, Jesus performed everything in the midst of the people. Peter's audience had either seen or heard of Jesus. There wasn't a person in the country of Israel at this time that hadn't heard about what Jesus had done. Peter wasn't talking to an unaware or uneducated audience. Many of these same people were in Jerusalem when Jesus was crucified. Steve, they knew about Jesus, but they didn't know Jesus for the salvation of their sins. Now, the question for you, my brothers and sisters, this morning, do you know the man from Galilee that can save you, from, save you and me? Do you know the man? Look at the text, verse 22 again. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves know. Peter wants us to know three things. Hear his words. Know that Jesus was sent by God. Lastly, know that Jesus did all of these miracles right in front of you. Jesus fed 5,000 plus people. Jesus walked on water. Jesus healed the blind, the crippled, the crazy, the demon possessed. Jesus raised people from the dead. The widow of Nan's son, Jairus' daughter, and his dear friend Lazarus. Jesus did all of these in public view. What has Jesus done for you this morning? Mary, what has Jesus done for you that you need to be thankful for? If you could just wave your hand and say, thank you, Jesus, for the roof over my head. Thank you, Jesus, for my life. Thank you, Jesus, for my strength. Thank you, Jesus, that I can see. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm in my right frame of mind. Thank you, Jesus, for my spouse, my children, for my job, for my reasonable health and strength. But thank you, Jesus, most of all, for dying in a place to set me free from sin and shame. Come on and give God some glory right now. Come on and give God some glory. Let him know that you are thankful for what he done this Easter morning. Just to review, the signs you need to hear, the signs you need to see, and the signs you need to believe in our uh, slain Lord. The sign we need to believe in our slain Lord. Jesus was resurrected. Look at the text, verse 23 and 24. Being delivered, being delivered by determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken by wicked hands, have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death. Because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. This is the part of my sermon where I might make some people uncomfortable this morning. Why? Because the scripture lays blame squarely on the sinner. Nancy, of which we all are. So if the word of God convicts, if the word of God pricks, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, put your seatbelts on because it's going to be a bumpy ride. As we make our final approach for landing here at Cedar Grove International Christian Airport, I'm putting the plane into a power dive. Look at the text, verse 23. Him being delivered and by determined counsel, for knowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified him. What that means is this. Jesus was given over to sinful men according to God's plan. God had full knowledge and allowed it to happen because it was his will for Jesus to die for our sins. Even though it wasn't God, even though it was God's will, it doesn't, Crystal, it doesn't excuse the sinful behavior of the men that lied on Jesus, that beat Jesus, that tortured, mis misused, and abused him, and crucified our Lord. None of that excuses it. Even though it was God's will, it doesn't excuse the behavior. These men gave in to their debased nature. You don't have to sin because no one makes you sin. You can't say like Geraldine, the devil made me do it. No, no. We sin because it feels good. We like it. We enjoy it. We do it when we sin. 
Even though we know it's wrong, we still do it. That's what we call willful disobedience. You see, these men, Rachel, killed Jesus because they wanted to, because they enjoyed doing it. It is in verse 22 we see both divine sovereignty and human responsibility. God had a sovereign plan to sacrifice his son for sinners like you and me. But that doesn't absolve our obligation to flee, to run, to get away from, and not sin. Peter was reminding the crowd listening that they were part of the mob that cried out, Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Both Jew and Gentiles joined together to kill Jesus. Our hands are dirty too. The scripture in verse 23 says, Ye have taken up by wicked hands and have crucified and slain. We too crucified our Lord. How did we do it? I'm glad you asked that question. Brandy, because Jesus died for the sins of the world, for every man, every woman ever born, for our past sins, our present sins, and our future sins. But even as though we are to blame, God demonstrates his own love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. For when we were still enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, Jesus. And much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved because he lives. Amen. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we now have received reconciliation and eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. But don't miss this. Here's the best part. Our slain Lord is resurrected. Verse 24. Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it wasn't possible that he should be holding of it. It was the power of God that raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus, in John the 10th chapter, told us that he had the power over death, saying, Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. Verse 18, he went on further to say, No one takes it from me, but I lay down my life I have the power to lay it down and have the power to take it up again. This is the command I received from my, my father. Somebody say power. power. Jesus demonstrated that he had power over death every time he raised someone from the dead. It was on his own resurrection. It was with his own resurrection on Easter morning. Somebody should have shouted on that. It was on Easter morning that he showed up, showed out, and demonstrated his power over death. Amen. Look at the text. God has raised up and having loosened the pains of death. We're almost done. <laughs> it was on Easter morning that he showed up, showed out, demonstrated his power over death. God has raised up loosening the pains of death. Why and how you ask he did that? Why? Because it was not possible to stop God's power. Mm -hmm. How? That he should not be holding of it. Meaning, nothing can stop, no one can prevent no one can hold back the power of God. Yeah. Not the power of our God, because Jesus has resurrection power. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, haze, where is your victory? But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our life application lesson today, Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The application here is this. You first got to confess. You second got to believe in Jesus. And then you'll be saved. If you don't do that, you can't be. But it's not that hard. But here's the complicated part. My brothers and sisters, people would rather lean on their own wisdom and trust in their own understanding instead of trusting in and believing in God. I hope I'm knocking down somebody's mailbox and I hope I'm busting open your window in your front house. Randy, Randy, what signs do you need? What signs do you need that you think people need to believe in Jesus? What if a preacher held up a sign that said, yield to God? <laughs> yield to God. Do you think that sign would help people? I don't know about that. What would help? A sign that said, I'm, I am the way? You think a person might follow those directions? You think somebody might actually follow that direction? Instead of getting on I-4, they might get on the heavenly road? It might even be possible there. What about signs that tell you to stay to your right and be righteous? 
Stay on the right. Stay to the right and be righteous. Could that be a sign for someone? Or maybe a sign that plainly said, Jesus is one way. There's only one way to Jesus. Just one way. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Maybe a sign, if you just stop sinning and do a U-turn, Sister Stewart, stop your sinning, you turn, follow Jesus every day, the narrow road that leads to life. Jesus is God's one way. Maybe, Sister Stewart, you might think that might work. But Margie, okay, ladies, I'm going to need your help. You need the other one? Yeah. That's all right. This is, this is my support. This is my support team. That's okay. You should have been in rehearsal. <laughs> Margie, maybe a stop sign. A stop sign. That should work. But here's the problem. We've all seen too many drivers just run through stop signs and get into accidents. But possibly, possibly a sign that says one way Jesus pointing up to the sky. Maybe that would work. Maybe somebody might believe. Maybe somebody might want to know the Lord. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Somebody say a sweet name with me. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. The Lamb of God, the perfect priest and prophet, the good yeah. shepherd, yeah. the bread of life, our living water, the great I am, the lover of our soul, the prince of peace, my rock, my sword, and my shield, my wonderful counselor, and my redeemer. Oh, my redeemer lives. He lives who once was dead. Raise that cross on the other side, ladies. There's only one sign I need, and it's the empty cross and the empty grave. There's no other sign for me that will point my way to heaven. There's no other sign that I need. Jesus told Thomas, because he didn't believe that he had risen from the grave, he needed a sign. Jesus said, here are the holes in my hand and my feet. Put your hand in my side. Thomas, crying out in perfect submission, saying to the Lord, my Lord and my God. What sign do you need to believe in Jesus? Jesus told Thomas, he speaks to you and he speaks to me today. Thomas, because you have seen me and you have believed, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's you and that's me. We ain't seen the Lord, but because we believe and have not seen him, we are blessed on that. What signs do you need to believe in Jesus? God raised Jesus from the dead and we are all witnesses of that. Let everyone under the, under the sound of my voice present know for certain that God has made Jesus both Lord and our Messiah. Let these words pierce your hearts. Let everyone repent of our sins and turn to God. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. This is the promise to you, to your children, and for those who are far away. All have been called on by our Lord and Savior and our God. I urge, I plead with you, if you are not saved, save yourselves from this crooked generation. What signs do you need to believe in Jesus? Choose this day of life. Choose Jesus Christ to stay connected to the true vine and come to the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Amen. If you will rise your feet, there may be someone on this Easter morning that may not know Jesus. He rose so that we could rise. So that we can have eternal life. There may be one. There may be someone. Will they come to Jesus right now? Will there be one that will come to Jesus right now? Will there be one? Lord, we thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. Remain standing as I give the benediction. Father, we thank you for this Easter morning. Lord, we just thank you for the fact that we're able to celebrate again. I, I'm truly thankful from the bottom of my heart, Lord, that you allowed us to come together as a church family a year later after so much disappointment, so much sadness, so much heartache. Father God, we just thank you for this joy that you have done for us. The sun is rising off, off of my shoulder. And Lord, we are celebrating the SO and the rising of your son this morning. It's in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we pray and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.